My name is Wendy Borsari, and with me are my son Connor and my daughter Ashlyn. Just over two years ago, my mother, Lee Ko, decided that it was time for her to begin doing something to increase organ donation awareness. She could have simply continued speaking to church groups and social organizations, but she wanted to do more. Knowing that most people sign up to become organ dona donors when they renew their driver's license, and also knowing that many high school s students are getting their license for the first time, she decided to approach the Sandwich High School Key Club. As soon as she met this determined group of teens, she was confident that together they could be a great voice for change. So with the help of the Sandwich Kiwanis Club, the Mythbusters was formed. This group of high school seniors and my mother put together the program you are about to see. They took this to schools around Cape Cod, speaking to other high school students about organ donation and dispelling many of the most common myths along the way. In the first year, over 500 students heard the Mythbusters message. In a minute, we'll travel to Sandwich High School to join the Mythbusters. This past year, the Mythbusters captured their production on DVD, which can, through PEG Media, a national sharing server, be downloaded to any high school class or group in the United States. I hope that you enjoy the program you are about to see, and perhaps decide to take even a small step in helping a very worthy cause. Hi, we're here with the Sandwich High School Mythbusters. They're part of the Key Club team. And we have a presentation today on organ donation and the many myths and misconceptions that arise around it. I'd like to introduce our cast of characters. In the corner over here, we have Jason playing the role of the father. Next to him, Shay plays our grandmother. Bo is the role of our student. His sister is played by Kristen, and Lauren plays his mom. So are you ready, guys? Let's kick this thing off. Where is that boy? He's always late. He's so annoying. Hello. Sorry I'm late, guys. A very interesting presentation today in organ donation at school, but I thought I'd share with you. I got um, these papers if you guys want to look at them. I don't think we need to discuss this. I just made a nice meal. I, I don't want no, to talk no, no, about no. it. No, I, I really think it's good that we talk about I'm it as so a family. I'm so hungry. Don't get your mom upset. She cooked this nice meal. No, Dad, really. While we're all together right now, I think it's best that we all talk about this. We should let the boys speak. Well, Thanks first off, I don't even think our church believes in this. Um, actually, Mom, there's no church that I know of that doesn't believe in this. I mean, you're still young, we shouldn't talk about this. No, Dad, really, I don't think you ever can be too young because there is no age limit on organ donation. Um, you can never be too young or too old, it's all based on medical status. So even though I'm old, I can still donate? Yeah, totally, Grandma, as long as you're fit. So, oh, yeah. Grandma and Dad could donate for me if I, to me if I needed it? Uh, you mean as alive? Or? Yeah. Yeah, totally, they could be alive, um, transplant, but the tissue and blood needs to match up. Well, what type of organs can you even donate? You can donate organs such as the pancreas, the liver, the heart, the lungs, um, skin, veins, corneas, even some bone. Yeah, but we came into this world with all our parts. I think we need to leave with them. Well, Mom, would it make you feel better if I told you that you can help over 50 different people? There are over 50 different things you can donate. Um, and you don't need your parts in the ground anyways. Exactly. If you're not using them, why not help someone else? It's so a gift of life. We definitely don't have the money for too this. Too expensive. No, really, it, it's free. It doesn't cost any money at all. So I don't have this on my license, but I think I want to become an organ donor. What do I have to do? Oh, that's simple. All you need to do is just go to our local registry and sign up there. Or if that doesn't work or they're closed, you can always just sign up online. And they can just send you a new license and you can have your symbol on there. So I'm getting my license in a couple of weeks, so can I just sign up myself or do I have to bring a parent? No, because you're 15, um, you need to have mom or dad come with you. Because if you're under 18, you need parental consent. Okay. Well, I don't, I, I don't know how they would do an open casket funeral if you want, if you had an organ transplant. Well, just think of it this way. It's all surgically done. Um, same as that thing as having an organ taken out. They'll sew you up and you'll look good as new. Um, huh? Remember your cousin Julie? Uh, talking about this just reminded me. She had her liver transplanted when she was a baby, and she's fine now. You can't even tell. Really? I never knew that. Yep. Wow. Um, if you were famous, would you be put at the top for an organ? Oh, no, absolutely not. Um... I have it right here on this paper, actually. It says, um, they're matched on blood and tissue type, geographic location, and medical urgency. Um, organ donation is completely blind to wealth and status. So. I think it's a wonderful gift, but I just hope that you will be safe and healthy and live as long as I've lived, and I hope that no one in our family ever needs an organ to live. If they do, I hope some kind soul has, has signed up to be a donor. That was wonderful, Grandma. Thank you. I'm glad we discussed this. Me too. Good, let's eat now, please. 
After seeing the skit that's just been presented, I'm sure many of you have questions about organ and tissue donation and perhaps how to become a donor. And in just a few minutes, we will get to your questions. But before we do, I'd like to share with you my personal experience with organ donation. Just over four years ago, my family received the most incredible gift. Yet while we celebrated, we knew another family mourned. What's truly amazing is that the gift we received would not have been available had it not been for a tragic event. For while another family prepared to go on living without someone they loved, we celebrated the gift of life. Through the signature on the back of a stranger's driver's license, my mother received a new heart and lived an additional three and a half years more than she probably would have had she not had that heart transplant. There's no other gift as selfless or life-changing as the gift of an organ or tissue donation. In my family, we've been given this gift on six different occasions. The number would have been seven had my cousin not died while she waited for a new heart. And nationally, more than 18 people die each day while waiting for a needed organ transplant. And a new name is added to the, organ, the national organ transplant waiting list every 11 minutes. My chances of someday needing a heart transplant are far greater than most people. The chances that my daughter will need one before the age of 20 are greater still. I know there are medical advances that will help to alleviate some of our symptoms, but I can only hope that if and when a new heart is needed, one will be available. In general, we can't choose how we die. We can, we can choose how to live, and through organ and tissue donation, we can choose what will happen to our body after we die. Death doesn't choose people according to who they are, how they behave, or what they believe. Death comes sometimes when you least suspect it. But through organ and tissue donation, death can be fooled in a sense. For while the body dies, the tissue and organs can go on living in someone who needs them, providing them with new life, new opportunities, and new hope. In 2009, there were more than 28,400 life-saving organ transplants. I hope that when my time comes to die, some of my organs and tissues are healthy enough for, to donate. One of the saddest things about my mother's death was that although she worked tirelessly to encourage people to become organ donors and to dispel many of the myths, due to the medications in her body at her time of death and due to organ failure, she was unable to donate. I know this wasn't the way she wanted it. She believed with all her heart in organ donation, for it was that new beating heart that she received when hers could go on no longer that allowed her to welcome many more sunrises. It was the most amazing and wonderful gift she and we, her family, had ever received. Now I'd like to open things up to some questions. So who would like to go first? Do emergency response units try not to save your life if you are an organ donor? If you are sick or injured, uh, the number one priority is to save your life, not to get your organs. The response team and the organ team don't have any communication between them. So they just want to save you. And then if, unfortunately, you die, then the organ team is brought in. Is there a chance that a person who they think is dead could still be alive? No, the doctors do all kinds of tests to make sure a person's brain dead before they take their organs. How many people actually register to become a donor? Well, um, Americans overwhelmingly support organ donation, but um, like 95% of Americans do, but only 32% actually register. What qualifications must you have? People of all ages are eligible to donate organs. Your medical condition at the time of death is a factor in that, though. What happens if your body won't accept an organ? After an organ transplant, the patient must take medication to help fight rejection, but in some extreme cases, the patient will still uh, reject the organ. What are the risks of being an organ donor? If you're a living donor and are donating a kidney, a lobe of your lung, part of your liver, or some of your bone marrow, the risk will be discussed with you prior to making the decision to donate. If you are deceased, there are no risks. Are there ever alternatives to organ donation? Um, getting an organ transplant is the last hope for anyone who needs one, so doctors will only offer transplant as an option after all treatments have failed. How old can a person be to donate an organ? There's no defined cutoff age for donating organs. Uh, organs have been donated from 70 and 80 year olds. It's uh, based on medical criteria, not age. Do they use the whole organ? Yes, except in the case of a liver or a lung, they can use different parts of those for the living donor. Will doctors randomly force you to donate your organs? Absolutely not. Um, if you aren't a registered donator, a um, doctor will come and talk to your family and ask if they would like to do donate your organs. And if you are a registered uh, donor, 
so a social worker will come and talk to your family and tell them of your wishes. Can you choose who gets your organ? Um, no, you can't unless you are a living donor. Um, your organ goes to the first person in your geographical area. How long does it take for a candidate on the waiting list to get chosen? Uh, sometimes an organ will become available very soon. Uh, maybe it could be a much longer time. The average wait time for a heart is about 200 days, but for a lung it's over 1,000 days. Does blood type have anything to do with organ donation? Yes, um, when donor organs become available, the organization that recovered the organs provides information about the medical characteristics of the donor and specific organs, so including medical compatibility between the donor and potential um, recipient. Can you pick what they take, or do they take what they need? Um, when you register to become a donor, you can specify whether you want to donate all of your organs or only specific organs. This is the same with tissue. So as you all leave and go back into your daily lives, I just want you to remember something. You have the power to change someone's world by being a donor. It's about living. It's about life. So thank you for listening. Hi, my name is Alyssa Caggiano. Um, I go to Quinnipiac University in Connecticut, and I graduated from Sandwich High School where Mythbusters was founded. And I think organ donating is important because it's as simple as it saves lives, and that's the best thing. Hi, I'm Sarah Moore. I'm 19 years old and currently a sophomore at Jacksonville University in Florida. I graduated from Sandwich High School and I'm one of the founders of the Mythbusters Organ Donation Program. I believe organ donation is important because it's giving the gift of life. And there's no greater difference one person can make in this world than that. Hi, my name is Payson Titcomb and I used to be um, a member of the Mythbusters uh, Donate Life organization at Sandwich High School. Um, and I'd like to give a, a special dedication to Lee Coe, who, who kind of brought me into the, the whole program and, and, and really turned my eye towards organ donation and, and the significance that it can have um, for many people in, in the world. Um, so thank you very much, Lee.